Hello, hello, doing a mic test here. Can everyone hear me? Um, so if you guys can hear me right, uh, do give us a moment to set up. Uh, we will be onboarding our speakers for today, uh, which will be me, Ziyang, and uh, two other guests. Uh, actually, not guests, but uh, Sean is our, uh, is our BDM, Business Development Manager, and one more guest, which will be... Uh, David, uh, David Moji, uh, which is our guest speaker for today. Yep. So do give us a moment to set up and yeah, sit back, relax, uh, and you know, uh, listen. <laughs> hey, David, if you're there, do you mind like uh requesting to do you mind requesting to speak uh so that you know that we can like have a mic test for test. Sean, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yep, yep, loud and clear, loud and clear. Cool, cool. Okay. Do give us a moment, yeah? What's up? Hey, David, do, do you mind doing a mic test? Hello, guys. Jim, Jim. Good morning. Yep, yep. Okay, so, uh, do give me a minute. I'm going to just go grab up some water, you know, grab some tea. Then you can get this right and start it, right? So, yeah. <laughs> Give me a moment. In the meanwhile, we'll let the uh, let more listeners join in. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, without further ado, let's kick start this podcast series. We have been doing this for quite a while. Uh, this is actually our fourth fourth episode in, so uh, very excited, very glad to be hosting this once again. And yeah, it's almost Christmas, guys. Uh, if you guys have any Christmas wishes, you guys can like drop drop it in the comments. Oh, by the way, we'll be interacting with our guests. Uh, uh, with our listeners in our Telegram group. So if you do have any questions that you might want to ask, you might want to join in our Telegram group. We'll be reading our comments and our... Uh, any. If you want to ask any questions, we'll be replying through there. Maybe we can like uh, read your, your comments and whatnot, right? And very exciting news as well. We'll be setting up our Discord channel. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, we'll be setting up our, our Discord channel for more activities next year. So coming next year, um, I'll be doing a lot more on in terms of what Velo Protocol can offer, right? Because we really do want to kickstart a lot of things next year. And uh, in 2024, we want to bring a lot of new things for you guys uh, in terms of like uh, what we have to offer. Uh, so we'll be working with a lot of like... Uh, uh, traders in general to bring you guys more content uh not just you know your your daily average DeFi protocol right we want to be something more than that so starting next year uh we'll be launching our uh, a new and revamped discord server which will be more focused on like perpetual tradings and whatnot so yeah and we will be hosting a bit uh, more activities over there so uh we'll, we'll drop the announcements right once it's open and uh, once it's more more upgraded in that sense yeah so without further ado let's kick start this episode of LT time today we'll be talking about opportunities in crypto in general uh we'll be talking about mini DeFi, trading and airdrops so you guys know crypto is like insane people can can do 100x in like probably weeks maybe sometimes days maybe you wake up the next day you buy a, a token by the name of bonk or whatnot and after three days, it runs 4x. Mm. Yeah, you know that feel. Um, so we'll be going about like the, the dynamics about all these mechanisms, like how can you find more opportunities in crypto, right? And yeah, so uh, David, do you want to come and introduce yourself and let the audience like know you in general? Okay, um, good morning, guys. My name is David Miju. I'm a DeFi analyst, and I'm also a content marketer. So technically, looking at the topic that we have today, opportunities in crypto, DeFi, trading, and airdrops, it's a very wide category. Yep. Technically, a lot, a, a lot can happen. Yeah. As, yep. I, 
Yeah, I'm hearing you. Oh, okay. So, David, just just to ask you a question, right? How long have you been in like crypto in general? Okay, I've been in crypto for for three years now. This is mm-hmm. my third year. Oh, okay, that's nice. Okay, so how did you get crypto get into crypto in the first place? Okay, I got into crypto um um when I heard about um airdrops and smart contracts. Now that was the first time I got into crypto. Uh, at that point in time, there was what used to call there was like a program where you can um, you know bring in people into the project and then they pay you crypto. They pay you in um what is called at that point in time. They pay you in Tron. Yeah. Oh. Tron, okay. Yeah. They were paying us in Tron. There were two of them. They were paying us in ETH and then they were paying us in Tron. So that was my first encounter with cryptocurrencies. And then from there, we now got into airdrops. And from that time to now, it has been a wonderful run. Experience for you, right? Oh, okay. So personally, so you would say like the, the first entry point for you to crypto was airdrops, right? So maybe let's start about that. Uh, do you want to explain to the users like in general? I think everyone knows what airdrops is, but just in case like there's new people, right? Do you want to like explain to people like how airdrops come to be or like uh, or your personal experience with airdrops? I think that's a very good starting point for us. So yeah, maybe you can get us started on that. Okay. Um, in simple terms, airdrops are rewards that projects give to community members or people that have interacted with their product or their platform in one way or the other. Now, most times when a project launches, they don't have, not all projects, not all projects or blockchains tend to launch with tokens. Some of them tend to launch out first and then, you know, release their products into the market. And then with time, they now announce like a token that is going to come to be the face of that particular product. So anybody or any community member that maybe has interacted with that product, maybe the product might be um, a decentralized exchange where you can swap tokens or it might be where you can stake tokens or all sorts of things like that. So when you tend to interact with those platforms, the project can, when the project wants to, you know, bring make their token mm-hmm. live, make their yep. token live in the market. They do what is called an airdrop, where they send a certain amount of tokens to those people that interacted with their product. They send it to their wallets. Mm. So technically, it's more like um, this one. Um, the, the, there are two types of airdrops actually. Um, retroactive, oh, okay. which is what I just explained. Yeah. Okay. What's the there other type of airdrops? Retroactive airdrops, and then. Like the easy ones where you can just you know paste your wallets on Twitter or maybe in the Telegram or in the Discord as maybe they just ask for wallets you can paste those ones and then they just airdrop tokens. But most times these airdrops that are not retroactive are not actually um how I put it they don't have a very high value. Maybe they might be worth like yeah maybe they they might worth like two hundred five hundred dollars maybe hundred dollars maybe fifty dollars. But the retroactive airdrops where you have to interact with that product to Mm. know how it works, those ones can be worth a lot. Um, I'm going to give an example. Now, in in December, this December, there was a a protocol that that, um, gave an airdrop to people that use their platform, Jito. It's on Solana. So... Oh, wait. Uh, Is it like a DeFi protocol in general? Or like... Yeah, it's 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 a DeFi protocol. It's a, oh, okay. it's a G2, right? Yeah, it's, it's a liquidity provision protocol on on Solana. Oh, okay. I heard like Solana like has been popping off, right? Like the the the, the charts has been going insane. Everything is just going to the moon. Like I think it's yeah. like, hitting a hundred bucks again. Holy shit, man! It's so crazy. Like people are like just Solana, aping the, the the ecosystem like crazy. Okay, back to the topic, right? Uh, what about this protocol? Okay, so what G two it is. Um, now, for people that stake their Solana on G2, you know, for staking mm-hmm. on Solana on G2, it could make you eligible for that airdrop. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of people stake their Solana on G2 for like, you know, a month ago, two months ago. Some even stake their own like some weeks to the airdrop date. It wasn't really hyped. People didn't really know about it. But when the airdrop came, 
the minimum allocation of the airdrop was worth eleven thousand dollars. The Jeez. minimum allocation for that particular airdrop. So imagine where you just um and uh, some people just take about one Solana. And that time Solana was trading for like fifty, sixty dollars. So imagine taking sixty dollars to get about one thousand. That's a lot of money. That's crazy, man. Okay, okay. So, so uh, just to ask, right, David, do you have any like exposure for yourself? Like, did, okay, let me ask you like the biggest question everyone wants to know. What's your biggest bag from airdrops that you made so far? Oh, um, my biggest bag from airdrops is about two thousand five hundred dollars from Abitron. Oh that's, yeah, that's, Abby, that's right? Really bad. Yeah, dang. Yeah. That- when Arbitrum did run airdrops for a lot of people, it was what like um two thousand five hundred. I've had others that actually ran you know crazy amount, but I can't really remember. I know that Kanto was worth two thousand plus two, and then um there was another one, but I've forgotten. But I think Arbitrum is the one I can remember clearly because that one happened this year. Yeah, the yeah. Part of this year, so I can remember that one, that one vividly. Though. I, I I didn't I didn't really do a lot on Arbitrum. That is why my allocation was not high. I had friends that got like ten key and Jeez. above. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy, man. Everyone was just like I remember like everyone was just farming. Uh I got a bit of the airdrop as well on Arbitrum because I was like playing games on RB, right? At that time I think magic was a very big thing. So yeah, I did, yeah. did some some training of it. Yeah, that was nice. Uh okay. Yeah. So, so maybe let's let's um teach a bit of our audiences, right? Like how to spot like these kind of hidden gems. Because um like what you said, just now one protocol, you just have to stick one Solana, you can like get thousands back and returns, right? So uh do you mind like sharing your secrets on like how to spot the next bag? <laughs> do you want okay, to like, drop, um current drop some, current some strategies? Currently, there are some tokenless products on Solana that I feel will have airdrops, um, you know, coming into next year. We've already heard that Jupiter Exchange is coming with their own token, which is mm-hmm. Jupe, and they've already distrib- like they've already um, um the snapshot, had their snapshots, right? yeah, and yeah. everything. But there are still some tokens that there are still some products that don't have tokens yet, like um, Meteoria OG, AG. I'm going to like just I'm going to put them in the comment section and pin it to the space. So that you can mm-hmm. check them out. Yeah. Um, Drift Protocol, Cube, Ex- Cube Exchange, um, Camino Finance. Um, which which one again? Which one again? Which one again? Hyper Liquid X Y Z. So there are a lot. There are a lot of them actually. But like these are the ones that I can remember at this point in time. And I feel that based on what Gito has done and what Jupe will do, and the fact that Solana is actually doing is actually going back up and has recovered a lot from its lows of its dollars way back in January. I feel that those airdrops will tend to do well next year. I, I don't know, but I feel that going into the bull run, one of the changes that will actually lead is going to be Solana with the way things have been going because it's not easy for an ecosystem to crash badly. You went from $250 all-time high to $8 is not easy. So coming back from that eight dollars to about I think it picked it picked at I saw it at ninety-nine dollars. I think a friend of mine told me I got to hundred dollars before it now <laughs> dropped to where it is currently. So I feel that you know interacting with these protocols on Solana at this point in time will make you eligible for a lot of things. So you can still you know um interact with some of them and try and get position in some of them. You just have to some of them you have to stick Solana or some of them. Some of them you have to provide um, you know liquidity for some particular pairs. Maybe like bonk, you can um provide liquidity for bonk against USDC or mm-hmm. bonk against Soul or something like that. So you can just do that and then when the time for snapshot comes, if you have a very good bag, um I believe that you should get an airdrop when their tokens go live. I see. Okay, that's cool. Okay, so um, I think like this is like a very good time for us to jump to the next topic, right? Since everyone's in on the point of like airdrop farming in general, so um, why why the majority of like people would, would primarily focus on like airdrops right now? Um, do you think it's like a very good way for for beginners in general to start off their journey on in airdrops, right? Rather than DeFi, um. 
like do you have any advice for newcomers like personally i i don't do airdrops farming very often right i don't go searching for the next big jam but uh but after listening to you i feel like uh, it's a very good way to to first of all learn about different types of protocols uh do a lot of like a beginner baby steps into crypto and at the same time um learn to uh learn to like identify like what are the good goods and bad actors of crypto right so do you mind explaining like um what what advices would you give to newcomers in general yeah um um for me when i started i actually started with DeFi. even if i had a lot of drops i started with DeFi because i was more intrigued you know with um swapping on decentralized exchanges and then um, you know adding liquidity and stuff like that so i started with DeFi. i didn't even have you know the liquidity like i wished to have at that point in time but i started learning oh. DeFi first but a lot of people have different approaches to different things um some people start with airdrops some people start with nfts some people start with DeFi. but i feel yep. that for you to have the the liquidity to actually play in the market and at this point in time i'll feel that you know starting with um with airdrops and nfts is actually the right way but now currently currently because unlike um unlike two years ago or three years ago, you could actually not actually you could actually just enter the market without money. Like you could not have anything. And then in like three months into your crypto journey, you can start making like five hundred. Because that time you could even do airdrops and you know just few forms and they would just send money to your wallets and stuff like that. But now it's quite difficult because now in order for you to make money from a particular protocol, you have to use money to farm that protocol. Mm. True, yeah, true. I mean, agree. Like a lot of interactions are needed, right? Yeah, just to you have to stuff. have a lot of interactions, a lot of volume on that particular protocol or, protocol or particular chain. While for NFTs now, you can, there are still some, you know, NFTs that um, whitelist that you can get easily that can make you know make some couple amount some good amount of money but now the the, the, the gatekeeping is crazy you mm -hmm. know getting white lists for some projects is quite hard so for you to have some good white lists for nfts now you have to have a very good amount of connections so it all brings you back to um how what you want to do and your learning curve Mm, anybody can that. start with DeFi. Anybody can start with airdrops. Anybody can start with NFTs. But it's your own learning curve that you have to look at. Do you have the patience to stay six months, one year, learning mm. about cryptocurrency, the blockchain, um, how blockchain works, DeFi? Do you have one year to learn about it before you start making money? That's what you have to ask yourself before you say, okay, I want to getting as a beginner because you can make money from any of them starting from ground zero that's actually the truth yeah definitely because, right. yeah because in DeFi, there are some pre-sales that go on those pre-sales now you can get white lists for those particular spots and then meet someone that actually has the liquidity the pre-sale does well you guys you guys like share the the, the profits after um he takes his capital out you guys can mm -hmm. share the profit and you've already started building your portfolio from there i have i have a lot of guys that you know that i introduced that started like that the same thing with nfts mm. yeah Definitely. so building liquidity can come from any of the category be it address be it DeFi, be it nfts but you just have to choose the one that you feel you have passion for because i'll tell you one thing for for for, for real it's not mm -hmm. easy it's not easy like continuing because you see a lot of things that would actually discourage you but where where you where you where 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 what makes you different from others is the fact that you're not going to give up so you actually hit your target so mm. yeah you can just choose between which category you want to start with a draw be defy beat nfts and then you start gathering knowledge from there mm, nice that's a very good like way to like for it's like a very good, good entry point i think like you would you would explain to everyone like how uh 
what was the best for yourself, right? And your learning curve, because everyone learns things at a different pace, and there's a definitely uh, and there's a definitely different appeal for everyone in general. Some people might like apples, some people like oranges, and like I what I like watermelons better. So um, okay, I think uh, we covered like a bit about airdrops in general already. Um, so the, the the conclusion is basically it's not that easy anymore. Uh, but I do feel like there's still gems out there. So if you guys really want to, maybe drop the a follow. Uh, he he follow. He he drops like occasional alpha here and there. Uh, he teaches. Uh, he basically is a content creator in general, right? So he helps content creation uh, very widely. And yeah, so let, let's jump into the next a bit. Uh, the next topic of a bit, right? Like I think DeFi in general. Since you mentioned that you joined in DeFi as your baby steps, uh, what 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 would you recommend like newcomers to do, right? In order to to you know, um. Uh, to understand DeFi a bit more and like what can they do to uh, to maximize their, their liquidity let's say I'm a, I'm a newcomer right I'm like uh, I only have $100, $100 and I just want to learn about DeFi so what can I do and like what, what should I do like like do you mind guiding us on that like yeah okay um, as a newcomer you have only $100 what I'll, uh, what I'll advise you to do is start learning there are a lot of materials that are actually for free that, you know, you don't have to pay for classes yet because you don't have the liquidity to do that. So you can head on to YouTube, on Twitter. There are threads that people have written about, you know, baby steps on DeFi. Um, they are, they've written things about protocols, how to interact with um, DEXs. On YouTube, you can still watch videos and other stuff like that. You know, gathering knowledge... People feel that you have to actually learn from somebody before you can get knowledge on a particular thing. No, it doesn't happen like that. Me, when I started, I actually did a lot of self-learning at first before I paid for my like first class. So I did a lot of self-learning. So you can also do a lot of self-learning. You have Google. You even have ChatGPT now. That time, there wasn't in ChatGPT. So you can actually ask questions now. You can ask ChatGPT questions now. So you have YouTube. You have Google. There are a lot of threads on Twitter. Twitter is, Twitter is a very resourceful tool that a lot of people don't know about. There's a lot of information on Twitter that people don't even know exists safe. So you can use your search box on Twitter to get a lot of information. You can use YouTube. You can use Google to search, okay, what's a smart contract? Um, what is blockchain trilemma? Um, what is gas fees? What is slippage? Um, why does it show error when I try to swap on a DEX? Different questions like that. And Google will always give you the best references to any question that you have. If you check on um, YouTube, you, there are also a lot of good tuto tutors that can you know, give you guidance on um, what to look out um, on when you're researching on a project. You get to learn about um, market cap, liquidity to market cap ratio, total supply, what total supply is, what circulating supply is, what um, burning is, valuation and stuff like that. You gradually learn. It it depends on you. That's why it has to do with a lot of discipline because you have to discipline yourself to make sure that you stay true to what you're learning. Because the truth is, if somebody is teaching you, you can just after after every class each day, maybe I'm teaching you and then our class for like three hours. After that three hours, you say, Okay, I'm not touching my books. The next day you come for another three hours, the day after that you come for another three hours, but you're not really studying anything, you won't have anything to grasp onto. You've not actually gained any knowledge. So the best thing to do is you study on your own consistently so that you can have a solid ground to stand on that you say, okay, I have a very good amount of knowledge on de decentralized finance, which is DeFi. Mm -hmm. So self-learning classes using YouTube, using Google, using ChatGPT and Twitter. I see. Nice. Okay, that's how you would advise like newcomers to begin with, right? Um, okay. Is there like any big thing to you like to cover in DeFi that do you think that's more essential for newcomers to understand? Like maybe maybe like uh okay, let, let's talk a bit about like uh LP farming, right? Like uh who, what would you advise to people that want to start provide liquidity to certain protocols and what would you advise them to avoid doing like uh like what 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 was your first big mistake i think like in in starting in defi let's let's help the users avoid this kind of situations right so um, did you make any big mistakes in in your starting journeys 
my my the first big mistake i'll tell you is always take profits that's my first big oh, mistake wait. because like you can't taking profits too fast or taking profits too slow you it, taking profits either way the truth is a uh, you can never go wrong taking profits even if you take profits and it pumps another 5x 10x you're still in profits the worst thing that can happen to you is you make a good amount of profit and then you don't take it and then it reverses back to your entry and goes below your entry the thing mm-hmm. is defi defi trading is a very emotional physical and mental task people might think okay uh, it's just crypto it's it's very very emotional and men- and tasking mentally because you have to you do a lot of thinking you challenge yourself you feel um am i selling the am i this thing that i'm selling is it the right decision is it the wrong decision should i sell now should i hold a lot of issues will come out but you always have to take profit because if you don't take profit you end up losing the profit you end up losing your capital and then you end up going back to ground zero without you having anything this is me telling you from um experience and going back to zero and coming back couple number of times and it's not easy that's the first thing that i'll tell you to do then you said something about lp farming yeah well yeah. let's teach a bit about like what what um on defi right like what do you all advise people to do when starting out to provide liquidity for for protocols in general okay um so concerning profit taking i think profit taking should be a class on its own concerning profit taking Let's say, let's give an example. You enter a particular coin with about hundred dollars, and then it does five hundred percent. Five hundred percent is five times your initial amount, your initial deposit. So, which means your hundred dollars is now about. Sorry, pardon me. No worries. Yeah. Me. So, which means your your hundred dollars is now five hundred dollars. Mm. Now you saw five hundred dollars, and then. This is where things become tricky. A voice comes into your head and says, if it can go to $500, then what is $1,000? It can definitely go there. Who knows? You might just hold it for some hours or for some days and then it runs to $1,000. That voice keeps coming and keeps speaking in your ear. And then you see that it's dipping. It goes from $500 to $495, $450, goes back to 500 goes to 520 and you say okay it has done the retracement it's going up now falls back to 460 again goes back to 500 at that particular time what it's part what I'll, I'll explain what it's doing what that particular coin is doing is it's trying to break a particular resistance now the resistance is between the 500 and 520 k 520 dollar region for your portfolio and it's trying to break there and it has not broken it at that point in time that you see that it has tested that particular point like two or three times i'll advise that you sell because mm. most times most times it tends to go down from there you know it's, it's only a few cases that it goes up from that particular um that it breaks that resistance and goes up only in some few cases in most cases it doesn't break the resistance it bounces of the resistance and then falls massively so as at that point i advise that okay even if you don't want to take all the profits remove your capital of hundred dollars and then remove an extra two hundred dollars which is you remove three hundred dollars from that particular coin and you have two hundred dollars now as a moon bag that moon bag now is if it goes up or it goes down you don't care you've taken your profits out even if it's not easy seeing two hundred dollars turns to about fifty dollars yeah it's not easy but that's you've taken your profit of taking your capital you've left the rest to run that's how we normally trade so when once you've seen things play out like that you now be like okay um i feel i know how to trade this market you don't know how to trade the market the market is very crazy you know at times i feel like this market has a mind of its own and also tends to ruin the, the mind of us buyers because most times you can be holding something and it does not pump and immediately you sell the next it goes day it to just, the moon. It just uh-huh. runs up. It's just like they were just waiting for you to exit the market. Definitely. It feels that way sometimes. Okay, so like... 
take at least 50 or 70 percent out of it if you feel that the coin will still go up if it does if you know that okay this coin is not going up this is the last bus stop sell everything we feel it will still go up take 70 50 to 70 percent and then leave the remaining as a moon bag if it goes down there's no problem if it continues to go up you still make profit either way okay I think we're going to jump into, like, it, since you're talking about trading, right, maybe we'll be, be focusing on this rather than DeFi. We'll be hopping on to the next train, right? So, um, I think today is just about, like, a small discussion on, like, how you can make opportunity, make capitalize on, like, opportunities in crypto in general because, you know, there's so much and so wide. You can do a lot of things. Uh, some people just do uh, Web3 content and they make money. Some people uh, do trading and they become, they make mi- they make millions, basically. Um, I'm just going to share a bit of my, ex- my experience, like, after you share, right? I, I feel like this resonated with me uh, really much because recently I did also participate in a drop. Uh, I think... Um, Celestia, right? Uh, the, <laughs> yeah, it got and dropped a bit of Celestia tokens around like two hundred. Uh, yeah, two hundred. Uh, two hundred plus tokens, I think. Yeah, and the first thing I immediately did was like, oh, okay, this thing, I don't think it will go up that much, right? I sold half of my bag at initial initial launch for so like two dollars, and the thing is up to six x. Oh my god, I regret so much. Like not just back holding, right? Because um, sometimes uh, this kind of things uh, you you don't expect it to run, but yeah. So the other bag I had was like uh, I sold half of my bags at two, and the remaining ones I think I sold around like six or seven dollars, which is in the first initial resistance, right? And actually, like boom, it went up to like thirteen right now. So. An uh, initial free airdrop of uh that was worth around four hundred bucks is worth now is now at the current price around like three thousand dollars by the way so uh feels a bit bad but uh definitely I don't think I, I do definitely agree with David right here saying that like you know taking profits it's it's a good thing regardless of whether uh it does run to the moon it, it does it doesn't run to the moon uh it's always good to take profits in general yeah. So let's hop into our like our final topic for the day, I think. So uh trading. Um I think a lot of people come into the space thinking like trading is a very big um uh, and very easy thing to do. Like you come in, you buy a token, it goes to the moon, it becomes hundred X, you become millionaire. But <laughs> I don't think it works that way for a majority of people, right? A lot of people grind, a lot of people do. So David, just to ask you, do you have like any uh experiences with trading do you trade futures do you do like uh like those kind of like uh leverage trading in general or do you do uh do you just hold tokens and you know trade on a daily spot basis sorry i didn't hear you please just come again Oh yeah, just to so to ask you, whether did you uh in terms of we are hopping into the topic of trading, right? Um, do you do like spot trading or do you do futures? Do do you do uh like do you do different types of trading or like do you just hold tokens in general, or maybe do you do leverage or do you do do you do anything like in no, particular? I, I I I stopped trading futures because futures almost almost killed me. Futures, mm. futures bones me badly, so I stopped trading futures. I just stick to DeFi now, you know, buy, hold, sell. That's why I just that's why I, I stick to. I'm not, I no longer trade futures. Mm, I see. Do you mind sharing a bit of your experience on on futures? Like, um, maybe uh, educate the audience about like why what what made you stop in general? Okay. Um, what made me stop? Um, in general is because there was a particular day i was in a trade and because of market manipulation is one thing that made me stop trading futures because you might analyze the chart and everything and then you see that that chart is meant to go bull which means it's meant to go up and then maybe one thing while you're in that trade one news or something just comes and upsets the whole chart and then you end up in a very bad loss and worse you get liquidated so i was in i was in i was in like three trades they were all going well and then mm-hmm. market manipulation came and lost mm-hmm. everything i was pissed but i at that point in time i asked myself 
if you put this money in DeFi, you would have made more than what futures would have given you. But you said no, you are looking for easy money. You know, futures, futures can give you futures is the, is like the fastest way to make money. It's very fast. You can just enter with like 50x leverage and then short ETH and maybe ETH goes from like two thousand dollars to like one nine. You've made a very good amount of money because um the leverage is like the leverage gives you access to liquidity that you don't have. You understand? So if you're entering that particular trade with one thousand dollars, if you use fifty x leverage. You're using 50 times 1,000, which is you're automatically using $50,000 to short that particular coin. So if that coin drops by 10%, you're going to make $5,000 from that particular coin. That is the easiest way to make money. Mm-hmm. If, that, so if that coin drops 1%, and um, if you're using 50x leverage, it means that it's normally dropped like about 50% or so, you know? So which means you've made like 25k of the 50k. Yeah. So which means if you enter that trade with one thousand dollars, you've already made five hundred dollars easily, just by that one percent drop. So futures mm-hmm. futures was, is a very fast way to make money, but it's also a very fast way to lose money, and the losing is always heavier than the the making. That's the bad part. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I lost future. I just left futures because. I've lost a whole lot on futures and I was tired of losing. So I left mm. the bubble that know how to trade it and then I'm just sticking to DeFi now. I see. Okay, okay. Then that's a bit sad to hear. But I think definitely uh, a lot of people blow up their accounts or like maybe um, get, get into bad positions due to futures trading in general, right? Because at the same time, it amplifies gains, uh, but it also uh, it amplifies losses. So um, I think like I, I'll probably be, be the one to, to talk about trading in general because uh, some some uh, I used to do day trading on a daily basis, but right now uh, I just don't have the mental capacity to do so. So I I, I do believe right uh, that that there's many successful cases in terms of trading right. Like people do um day trading from a day to day basis. They they just sit there, look at charts all day and you know, start trading in general. I, I personally you just also know friends that have made like uh bags from trading. Uh like for example, uh I used to, to be in contact with like a very famous crypto trader, uh C T crypto Twitter trader, uh by the name of Blank Brain Trading. Um he he did like a from a thousand five hundred he ran up the, all the way to a hundred k in a matter of one year, but it took a lot of discipline and whatnot, right? And to 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 be able to reach that point, um, I I I asked him like what 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 made you do so well? Uh, it was mainly about like the the free mentality of uh knowing that hey, this money might go to zero, but um, it's okay because uh, this is not my main job. This is not my main main portfolio, right? This can be a main hustle, but uh, for him, it was really it was easy because uh he wasn't managing like a lot of stress at that point in time and uh that that was what he wanted to do so uh, also the other thing that came down was risk management so there were times that his portfolio started from 1005 he went down to like 600 700 but uh he took uh he he did good good risk risk management in general and he, with big conviction comes big trades and with smaller conviction he took less risk so even right now at uh, his portfolio is around like 80k right he occasionally still takes losses around like 3k 4k and 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 um he always says like oh um minimal losses it, it's it's fine because you know the upside is definitely more than that and you, if you can leverage your position better in in general like for example um if you know um you can read a percentage of your portfolio and just go crazy with it but don't lose anything more that you cannot lose that that's how um he would if he would explain it to me and i i, I really do think trading if comes down to strict discipline uh and when it comes down to strict portfolio management like uh you only risk one percent. The, the the actual true way of trading, right, is actually only to risk one percent to three percent of the portfolio each time you trade. So and uh, you you take uh qual sometimes you take more quantity, sometimes you take more quality. So in in general, you wouldn't uh wouldn't. Uh, I will throw my entire portfolio into one trade, hoping it will make 
seven to eight acts or whatnot in, in one trade, right? That's how DGENs do it. They uh I, I used to be a DGEN. I, I, I can pretty so much say say myself, uh I would eat hundred percent of my portfolio into one trade. Uh and sometimes it works out but sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, don't don't be a coin flipper. Consistency is what you that definitely want in trading. Um if you can do a if you're if you're stress free, if you are very uh your 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 conviction is right. Just do do what people do. Um and, and you know, because to me, there's so many successful cases out there in terms of like traders, right? Like why 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 some people can drive Lamborghinis <laughs> where Lambo by the way. Yeah. So some people some of them can, you know, drive Lambo, some of them like um there's only two spectrums of traders. You wouldn't see a middle ground trader. You you would only see good traders or bad traders in general. You you have never go and you have never listened to someone go like, oh I'm a semi I'm a normal trader. I I I do I do decently well. That's only good and bad. So either you're on the super good spectrum or you're on the super bad spectrum. You can agree with me, you cannot if you have any uh, suggestions or thoughts you can drop it in our telegram group you can go against me i'm willing to debate this with you but i do believe that's only good or bad projects in general you know not good or bad traders in general so uh and with this in mind so you you only hear good and great successful cases when it comes down to very good traders like this guy trades and he makes millions of bucks or like th- even thousands of bucks. But you never heard of like a go go a person go like, oh, I made uh small amounts of money in terms of trading. They they generally are always very successful or very very they don't do well at all. So yeah, and and when it comes down to trading, it takes a lot of strict uh strictness like what David mentioned. It takes a lot of like hard mental my mental mind grind and whatnot, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Those yeah. You wanna chip in on this? Yeah, I say yeah, it does. Training takes a lot of mental strain and stress. Yeah. So but if you if you can risk manage well like uh like for example if you have a hundred if you have a thousand buck portfolio, right? For one trade you take you take only ten ten dollars. I don't think it will be that stressful at all. So it really comes down to what you you are willing to risk and yeah. So I think uh we will be probably oh just to to to, to hype you guys up, right? You know, this we will we'll most likely be doing uh next year a bit of like educational content in terms of like how can you trade better and be be more efficient although we are not licensed uh financial educators we are more we are more than willing to help to come up with channel with educational content and we'll be working with some uh close uh close traders in general that, that can perform so uh do keep a look up on that uh we will by the way, this is not financial advice. We are not teaching you how to make your your. We we won't give you like uh giga trade ideas and like expect you to take them hundred percent using all your portfolio. No, it's more like a reference point of like uh we can share trade ideas into the Discord group. People can discuss that because we we are a a DeFi protocol slash a hybrid dex that that allows people to trade futures in general right that's why we want people to be here and yeah oh by the way do check out our latest announcement i don't want to spoil anything yet but we will um we are we are actually partnering with a country that uh, so that that's actually very exciting uh a country right not not just any <laughs> not, a, not a protocol not not a small nft project yep we're actually partnering with a country to, to utilize our fellow tokens in a very very special case in a special way but yeah, we'll be dropping more news next, uh, following up next week or next year. So uh, do do follow us and then do do, uh, yeah. Okay, so I think uh, we're gonna wrap things up. So maybe we do a bit of like a Q and A session. If anyone has any questions they would like to ask or interact with us in general, right? You can drop our comments. Uh, drop your comments into the Telegram, or you can just uh DM the. You can re- even request to speak if you want to ask any questions, right? Like um, what what is your what 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 context they have? Like what do you want to understand? You can just like you know, uh yeah. So I think we'll give like the audience a bit of uh like one to five minutes time to you know to 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 see like then yeah. So uh one 
One of the questions would be... Dun, 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 dun. Let's see here. Okay, if anyone wants to speak, you guys can come on the stage. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm reading through like the, the Telegram group for now. So, okay. <laughs> I think everyone's just going to the moon because like we made a small announcement, right? And the token pumped like 8%. So, <laughs> that is crazy. Okay. So, uh, one of like the, the comments was to request like uh a a additional okay this is more like a, not not more like a question but more like a statement right like hey uh do you guys mind adding to uh your updating your Velo Labs partners like on on your website because that there, there are new new people that came in but the website is updated yeah we'll be updating our website pretty much soon thanks for the feedback by the way. And uh, we'll be 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 adding the new list of people into into the portfolio. So don't don't worry. We'll be upgrading our website pretty much soon. Um. Okay. Okay. This is a bit like technical support questions, but uh. So I'm currently holding a lot of tokens in Kocoin, but I'm trying to move my crypto to hard wallets. I can find a way to do so. Okay. Uh, for this question, we'll probably drop you a DM from our moderators, so we'll be more than willing to help out if you have any like hardware questions and whatnot, right? So uh, no worries. We'll get this con. We'll get get this to to. I'll get our moderators contact you. Okay. So hmm. Um. Okay. Okay, I don't think there's much questions at all. But David, uh, I think that's a closing statement I'd like to ask you to like, uh, maybe give you one last big question, right? Okay, what's your biggest advice to people that want to start out crypto? Like, yeah, I think that's my 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 end question for you. Okay, um, my advice for people that want to start crypto. Though the bull market look, looks like it's already like coming, my first advice would be to get knowledge. Just get knowledge. Because without knowledge, you make a lot of mistakes in the markets and you lose a lot of money. So get knowledge. Knowledge is very important. Get knowledge. That's the very that's the first thing I can tell you. Just get knowledge. Okay. So just do your study, do your own research, do your own own finance and whatnot, right? Nothing, nothing big much, nothing. Uh, oh well, someone someone dropped the comments into into. Oh, okay, Velo actually actually has their own tokens, right? We don't. Do, oh, sorry, uh, just chip in. So Velo actually has already has their own tokens, and we won't be doing any airdrop campaigns. But, uh, we do have a lot of like interactive uh events, and we'll be sometimes giving out uh. Uh yeah, Vel tokens as uh, as interactive rewards. So do do come join us in our events. We have Vel Thursdays, which are quizzes that re- re- related to the crypto space, and sometimes we also ask you to debate, and you know, so you can earn some Vel tokens from there. And if you are interested, uh, we'll be doing way more than just um uh daily this kind this this kind of events. We'll also be doing some some trade events coming up soon uh starting for the next quarter so yeah i think that's pretty much about it so uh david just want to thank you here so much to be able to to come on on, on stage to be to educate our audiences so we're uploading this to youtube so just in case any one of you wants to miss out and david you can actually add this into your portfolio right next time you can just tell people like hey actually how, how's the podcast series on 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 Velo. <laughs> so just to give a bit of a shout out, do dra- drop David a follow. And uh he posts very good content in general, like teaches people like what what to spot and he also shares the occasional alpha here and there in terms of like um what what is there to be 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 yeah uh it, to be spotted right uh i actually saw him like post a bit bit of tokens in in general and like some of them do do perform quite well so yeah just draw him a follow and you know maybe you can learn more from him so yeah i think without further ado uh we'll just end this uh podcast right here so david really thank you for coming on on stage and you know being able to educate the audiences in general thank you so much thank you guys thank you thank you thank you for your time Okay. So without further ado, I think we'll be ending our podcast here. So yay, do join our Telegram just to give a bit of a shout out. And uh, yeah, 
Do you want to try to and follow us closely? And a lot of big news is coming for Valor. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, thank you so much, people.